us again. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. This is God's word. What brings you hope in life? I know that's a very broad question. I'm sure you're trying to think of a moment in your life when you were given hope about something. I remember as a kid when my parents would take us to the doctor's office to receive a vaccine or some kind of shot. There didn't seem to be much hope there from my perspective. Yes, there was hope that after receiving the vaccine, I wouldn't get polio for the rest of my life, but that didn't make me feel better in the moment, having to get this painful needle into my arm. But my mom gave me the hope that after we left the office, I would get some ice cream or a Slurpee for my efforts of sitting there and receiving the shot. She gave me hope that the pain I would endure would not be more than I could take. She gave me hope that the disease that it was protecting me from would never harm my body. And she gave me that hope in a sweet treat as a victory. Or maybe if you sustain an injury that requires a surgery, it can be hard to have hope in that moment. Because before you receive the surgery, you're in so much pain. And maybe you fear that when the doctor opens you up, there is going to be something that surprises him. But the doctor gives you hope. Hope that he's done the surgery hundreds of times, that it's routine for him. Hope that the surgery is going to go very smoothly. Hope that recovery is going to go well. And then recovery comes. And when you're in the pain of recovery that can last months or more, maybe with therapy, depending on the surgery, it can be hard to have hope then too. You think to yourself, am I going to ever get back to normal like I used to be? Will I be able to afford the hospital bill and the therapy bills? Will I be able to go back to work soon? And it's hard to have hope. It's hard to have hope in a lot of things on this earth that we put our hope in because often those things are temporary. Ice cream melts and pain endures and trials always keep coming into our lives. Sometimes they all come at once and it feels like an overwhelming flood. But in this lesson, Peter tells us to put our hope in something that is permanent. To put our hope in our Savior's resurrection that gives us hope in our physical, spiritual, and emotional trials on this earth. And it ultimately gives us the hope that our salvation is waiting for us in heaven. This first letter that Peter wrote to the believers was an instruction to them for facing various trials in their life. Peter says, here's how you suffer while being a Christian. Here's how you live well in a pagan society. Here's how you are to be holy but those are in the, in the next few chapters. What we have today is Peter's greeting. And as often as letters start in the New Testament, it's a greeting and it's joy and it's thankfulness for everything that Christ did. Because the people that Peter was preaching to, they had not seen their Savior with their own eyes. They went from the word of Peter's mouth. And he says this to them. In all of this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have to suffer in all kinds of trials. In the first part of this section and the last part are that joy that we receive in the resurrection of our Savior. But Peter knows the reality that we live in. These two pieces are like the bread in the middle. That PB&J is the suffering that Peter says the reality of this world that we live in. And all of them are equally important to understand what this means Jesus' resurrection for us. Because Peter realized that the people of his time needed hope. Every believer at that time was in fear for their life because they were out to kill Christians. If they put Jesus to death, then what's to say they're not going to put us to death? We saw what the disciples were doing in locked rooms afraid for their lives. They lived in a time of believing by faith and not by sight. They didn't have the blessing of Peter who was able to see his Savior with his own eyes. 
to, to watch him perform miracles, to see his transfiguration, to help him walk on water. He saw the empty tomb. He saw him suffer. He saw him be ascended into heaven. The believers he was writing to didn't get the chance to see their Savior like that. But Peter reminds them of this. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Those believers put their faith in the same Jesus that Peter followed, although they could not see him. And we also put our hope in that same Jesus, although we cannot see him today, because we also walk by faith, not by sight. And we face similar trials in our lives today as Christians. We also are persecuted for our faith, albeit not as violent a way as some of the apostles faced. But we also believe in something we can't see. We put our hope in something that we cannot touch. And that doesn't make sense to the world. It sometimes doesn't make sense to us because we are people that like to put hope in things that we can see, that we can feel with our senses. We put our hope in the things that we have. We put hope in ourselves. We put hope in others around us. But what happens when the world faces crises? The stock market implodes and people lose millions. Where's the hope? Inflation is going crazy. Where's the hope? Jobs are lost. People get sick. People die every day. Where is the hope in this bleak world? Another shooting happens. Where's the hope in this world? But the hope that we have, if we put it in things on this earth, goes away so quickly. And it's so easy for us to reach out to God and say, why would you let something like this happen? The fact of the matter is we don't put our hope in things that are permanent. But when we as believers face grief and all kinds of trials with whatever is affecting you personally today, we put our hope in our Savior. And here's why. These have come, these trials, so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. We will always have trials in our lives. No matter how long we live on this earth, there will always be sadness. There will always be grief. There will always be suffering and pain. It's a part of being human. It's a part of being a sinner. And God never promises that he's going to spare us from any of that. And we can pray all we want for God to take it away. And he, in his good grace, may say no. But we have a reason to greatly rejoice. We rejoice in the hope that we have through our trials because our Savior has been raised from the dead. He gives us a living hope that is permanent And Peter says the payoff of that grief and trial is that it refines our faith and makes us stronger in our resurrected Savior. And the result of this faith is the hope we have in our salvation, which never goes away. It is a promise that is with us forever on this earth. If we back up to the beginning of our reading, we see how we have received this hope. Peter says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Last week, we celebrated Easter. We celebrated the resurrection of our Savior. We know what Jesus did for us. Today, we learned how his disciples sometimes doubted what Jesus did, and he proved to them by showing himself that he indeed had been raised. And our Savior has given us hope today, although we cannot see him in the new birth that we have received in our baptisms. It's the same mercy that caused Jesus to die for our sins. It's the same mercy that we receive every single day despite the sinfulness that lives in our hearts. And Peter says, through that mercy, we have been given a living hope A hope that doesn't rely on earthly things because earthly things are often disappointing and many times temporary. 
but our hope is living and it is active because Christ is alive and he assured us of our forgiveness in heaven. An inheritance into that can never perish, spoil, or fade. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. We and the inheritance that we have been given are shielded by God's power. We have been given the armor of God to protect us from those things. And God has promised to be with us every day of our lives. And even now, when things seem to be getting worse and worse, God promises to be there. And when sometimes our faith doubts and we waver as Christians, like Thomas, God is there. Just like my mom telling me that the pain of a shot would not be more than I can take, God tells us that the pain we go through refines our faith, makes us strong in our Savior, and it will result in a tremendous payoff in heaven for us because we have a living hope. Our hope is in the salvation that Christ won for us by his suffering, death, and resurrection. And as Christians... We live on this earth while we wait for Christ to either take us home to heaven or for Christ to come again and take us all home. And God has blessed us with everything we need on this earth for our temporary home, but we know our permanent home is in heaven. And during those trials in our lives, it just reminds us of how temporary things are on this earth, how this stuff in the long run is meaningless because what we have in heaven is greater than anything we can imagine here on this earth. And praise be to God for the mercy that he has shown us by raising his son from the dead and giving us a hope that is living, that is active, and that is permanent. Even though we can't see it or feel it or taste it, Christ's resurrection is real. It it happened, and that fills our hearts as believers with an inexpressible and glorious joy. In our lives, it's hard to find hope. It's hard to find hope when things are going wrong because the things we put our hope in are often disappointing and they are almost always temporary. You hope that whatever pain you're feeling in your body or in your soul will go away. And when we put our hope in things on this earth, maybe it makes us feel good for a moment because it gives us that instant satisfaction because our earthly needs are met and that feels good. But Peter says... Put your hope in something that satisfies your soul for eternity. Put your hope in your Savior. It's something you can't see. It's something that you can't touch. But it's a hope that never goes away. It's a hope that is permanent because it is always alive and active because our Savior lives. It's a hope that our home in heaven is waiting for each and every one of us when God chooses to take us there. Jesus' resurrection gives us hope on this earth and a hope that our salvation is waiting for us in heaven. Amen. Please stand.